Welcome back to Lagaria, everybody. I am your Dungeon Master, TGE, and these are our Intrepid Heroes. Say hi, Intrepid Heroes. Hi, Intrepid Heroes. Oh, I have four of you, and one of you went for the joke this time. Just like one of you went last time. We have got to work on that. I don't okay, want to work well, anymore. teacher, requiring someone to work, and we know that some people in this uh, in the stream just don't do that. I mean, that, that is true. That is true. So, uh -huh. uh, Nora, you get the pass for the one time. Everyone else, I'm disappointed in. Well, that's okay. That I'm disappointed point? in you, too. I mean, yes, but that's understandable. I mean, who really opens with, I'm joined by my intrepid heroes. Like, come on. You're, you're really losing your touch in these introductions. I mean, really are. I mean, did you want me to go through and do the Who's Line style introductions again? You're no Drew yeah. Carey, but... I mean, no. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean if, yeah. if anyone hears Drew Carey, it's Nora. He's the one built like him. Oh. Yeah, but he's not funny. <laughs> Looking he is. I mean, but there is a... There is, there, there, that's not even the worst part about Drew Carey. The worst part is he's a Cleveland Browns fan. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> am I wrong? Everyone's, everyone's got their own fault. <laughs> <laughs> and now we just got canceled because we insulted Drew Carey. He's not going to watch our channel anymore. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, I mean, you can still go after Guy Fieri, right? I'm more concerned no, about Teach getting that. a visit from Baker Mayfield now. I mean, if Baker Mayfield shows up at my door, I'm going to be okay with this. I wouldn't. And he actually has a chance to show up at my door, so that's a whole other story. Yes, but we're not going to talk about that. Anyway, what we are going to talk about here is what happened last time. Uh, what happened last time is I, as a DM, messed up. <laughs> I forgot to look at something, how something worked, and I nearly killed everybody. <laughs> and then Ponzi tried to kill himself. Yeah. Uh, you guys went down into the sewers underneath Eagle's Guard to make your way into the slave quarters. While there, you had discovered that there was a gelatinous cube that you, at the beginning, avoided and ended up face-to-face -face with a couple of water spiders, or as we call them, wooter spooters. Um, they were vicious, they were fast, and they were out for blood. They did a lot of damage, but eventually you did manage to calm the savage beasts. However, you did learn that they were probably placed there to guard something, because even though they were natural... They're not natural to sewers. Hmm. After that, you found what you assumed to be the entrance to the slave quarters, but that was being guarded by a giant rat. Using the echoes from Scott Kite and Ponzi being an idiot, you guided the rat to the gelatinous cube. Unfortunately, before the gelatinous cube could swallow up the rat, it decided it wanted to, uh, to taste the rainbow and uh, swallow up our leprechaun friend, Ponzi. Ponzi no. while you go. I'm going to correct the GM right now. Before the gelatinous cube could go after the rat, Ponzi decided he wanted to go gelatinous cube diving for that some shiny objects. That is true. While inside the gelatinous cube, Ponzi cast Ray of Sickness, which caused the gelatinous cube to expectorate Ponzi into the side of the sewer. Then the rat and the cube met, and we had a delicious marriage of gelatin and sewer rat. Uh, the rest of you, uh, then the party, Chloe, Kite, Ponzi, and the Prince made their way up into the slave quarters where they met Zakaya, a.k.a. Kai, who was the person who fought the Prince in the exhibition round. He gave you a little bit of information as to what was going on, talking about how he was the only slave left because a small hooded man and a taller hooded woman had shown up and they were taking them away for what Kite assumed to be experimentations. He also did mention the fact that they were talking about the Duke's condition. After that, you decided it would be better to get him out of the sewers, so you made your way back. We left off with you guys making your way out of the sewers into the streets of Eagle's Guard, trying to figure out how to get from where you are back to the boat without being seen jailbreaking a slave. Yay. So without further ado, welcome to Shadows of Ligaria, Episode 6, Looking Forward to Never Look Back. And we're going to start in media res exactly where we left off last time. The five of you, that would be Chloe, Kite, Ponzi, Kai, and Prince Alwyn uh, coming out of the sewers in, uh, in the District of Eagles Guard where you were basically right outside behind the stadium in a little alleyway. You have to make your way from there to wherever it is you are going. Well, um, as soon as we get out of the sewers, though, 
Uh, Chloe is going to tell Almond to hold still so she can make him invisible so he won't be seen traveling with a potentially escaped slave. He's going to look at you. Um, um, why not just make him invisible and points to Kai? Well, because that's a great idea. So I didn't think of that. I don't know why I didn't think of that either. Anyway, um, that's, that's a wonderful idea. Uh, and she'll call Kai over. Say, okay, just hold still and we won't be able to see you, but you'll be able to see us. So um, please don't run off ahead of us. Okay? Um, where, where would I go run off ahead of you? Well, you are technically free now, so... And I'm best off following you back to Argenti, where I'm safer. Uh, it's not wrong. I just wasn't entirely sure what your mental state was. Do me you... a favor, Chloe. Yeah. Roll me a d20 luck check, please. As you were having this conversation, uh, everybody else, roll me perception checks, please. Everybody else? Well, technically, if, if you think that, that you are I around think there, I would be there. Let me redo that, Teej. Ignore that first one because that was the GM, so it won't show up for everyone. I don't think she would be there, but I don't actually know how you plan to have her in this. So. Okay, so Alwyn will be the one who hears this. <laughs> um, as you go, he, he hears the clank, clank, clatter, clatter of two guards coming around the corner for uh, a sweep. And without having any other thing to do, without, without thinking he just uh, goes and um, basically just tackles Kai into a little alleyway because you wouldn't have enough time to cast the spell with the guards coming. Fair. And you, you all see this. Uh, we definitely like probably scare off into the alleyway, or at least I know Chloe would to see like to follow after. Uh, so, Kite, Ponzi, you all see this. Kite is waiting for Ponzi because he knows if Ponzi is out there alone, he's probably going to say something stupid to the guards. Yeah. And, and go ahead, Ponzi. You have a smirk. No, Ponzi's waiting for the guards. Okay. So, as these two guards approach, uh, Kite. You recognize these two guards. These are the two who gave you crap when you tried to bring Alwyn back home. Evening, gents. Oh, if it isn't the prince's new babysitter. Looks around. Doesn't seem to be here now. You lose him already? No, I... haven't been watching him tonight. Apparently, you lost him because you're out wandering the streets rather late, aren't you? Just doing the rounds we're supposed to do. Are you going to give me crap again? Do you want me to give you crap again? To be honest, it's not worth my time. The the one who was giving you the one who was like giving you crap like tries to like you know bulk up and like you know get all like flexy in his part like whoa, whoa hold on hold on and then no, no no you don't want to do that you don't want to do that remember he's got the ear of the princess you don't want to do that and he's like doing the push him back he's like hold me back you better hold me back like, like clearly trying to posture it's funny that you worry about the princess like you would actually make it to uh having to deal with her. These clowns. You hear the other one, the one pushing, what did you say, little man? And on cue, Kite Sclave, the butt end of it comes down and smacks Ponzi across the back of the head. 
Black. Uh, uh, ow. Oh. <laughs> the guard the guard who was approaching looks and goes. Just sort of like gives Ponzi a nod of okay. Okay. Like of the whole like violence normally isn't allowed, but that one's acceptable. <laughs> You gonna let him treat me like that? It's either he smacks you or I arrest you. On what charges? Being a public nuisance. He has you there. I, I have... You are one. I... Uh... And if you keep it up, resisting arrest. Ponzi just goes and sit down, sits down and starts rubbing the back of his head. So the guards look at Kite. All right. Just keep him out of trouble. And... Trust me, keeping him out of trouble is just as much of a full-time job as watching The Prince was. The guard looks and goes, Somebody must hate you. They start to walk off. All right, so we're going to move to the alleyway where the where, where Alwyn and Kai have just sort of like done that sort of like Simba and Nala Lion King roll, and they roll and they st- and like like they stop and and Kai's like, "What the hell are you doing, man?" And he goes, "Guards!" And then they both like one flops off the other and they look and um, well. AOPT. Yes. Um, what would be staring back at them as they look up? Would it be a human face or a feline face? Human right now. <laughs> okay. So they both look up, and neither Kai nor the prince has actually met Kiara. So there's just this the feline face just looking back over at them, and they are scared to holy hell. Because based on the picture, um, yeah, Kiara's a bit of an intimidating female. <laughs> I just admit. Yeah, she still has like the the ears, you know, but yeah, yeah no, she um so this is I'm sorry, um out of character real quick. This is the um is it the prince and the person he was Yeah, it is it is the prince and the slave who they just freed. Uh, right, here's a right, picture okay. of Kai, the slave. And here so, is the prince if you need that. And they just made a, did they they just made massive noise coming back there or? They ba- basically from what you saw because you were back here, you saw Prince Alwyn just basically spear this other kid into the alleyway. They tumbled a bit doing the Lion King Nala Simba roll tackle right. thing. And then they came to a stop, they fought for a second, Alwyn said guards, they stopped, they basically tumbled off each other after the tackle, and they look up, and you're just sort of hovering over them. So, Kira's gonna give this, like, stern look down, and like, is royalty always that stupid? What do you, what do you mean? Just trying to not get caught from doing something we're not supposed to be doing? Is that, is that, is that, who are you anyway? Stop making noise, guards. Uh, um, at, uh, go ahead and then, uh, Kiara, make me a perception check. All right. Oh, that's good. Wow, okay. <laughs> uh, so you don't hear, even though Chloe is loud, you're still focusing on keeping them quiet, so you don't hear her show up in the alley a little bit after that because, you know, it takes a, a, a quick second or two to respond to someone being speared into an alleyway. So you're Just sitting there over them, shh, guards, and Chloe, you walk into the alley, you've got Llewellyn there, uh, probably flapping her to whatever Llewellyn does, and you see this intimidating figure sort of standing over these two people, almost like, you know, guilty mother looking over them like, you know what you done did. <laughs> Well, immediately, because she's going to recognize the ears, she's going to kind of go, oh, Kira! And she's going to like hold her mouth, like hand over her mouth. 
<laughs> so Kira, Kira's eyes like immediately like do that thing where you, she's looking down and then just kind of like like look up <laughs> like you know, without the head moving you know you get that eye movement and she looks up it's like oh at this point you hear a tonk that Chloe you clearly know is the sound of the back of Kite's glaive thwacking off of Ponzi's head Hello, town. <laughs> so Gary just gives like this, like this, like incredulous, like. Oh, right. And then she starts like tiptoeing over there. It's, yeah. Get over there. Like get over here and shut up. She hasn't said a word. Right. Yeah. So the like. Chloe, you've seen this look on the prince's face before. It's the same look of absolute, like, pant-shitting terror he has when Kite gets mad at him. And he's just looking at Kira. (laughs) Once Chloe's close enough to hear her whisper, Kira just kind of whispers, Where's the others? Oh, they're out there. Uh, I think they're covering for us with the guards. I just don't want to deal with them. The others are with the guards. The guards. Okay. Dealing with guards is never a good thing. It's good to see you again. Oh, yes. Wait. At this point, Al, wait. You know the very intimidating woman? Well, she's not that scary. I mean... She's scary, but it's She's scaring you now. Well, it's in a different can, way. Can I have her eyes glow like a cat? Yes, go right ahead. <laughs> so she like turns and for that briefest of moment has that yellow like feline eye glow in her face as she looks at you. She says nothing and then looks back at them. Alwyn <laughs> goes, I didn't say scary, I said intimidating. She actually looks at all and just kind of gives a nod, like, thank you. <laughs> oh, actually, a little bit of excitement. Like, oh, I gotta see it. Yeah, and, and Kai is just looking like, what the hell? Like, he's like, this is like, I was a slave and I saw some weird things. This might be the weirdest thing I've seen. <laughs> uh, at this point, the guards have gone, so Kai and Ponzi are free to do what you would like to do. Why do you always have to get me in the back of the head in the same spot. Why do you always have to open your mouth and say stupid stuff? I don't always say stupid stuff. Sometimes I try to make a sale. You weren't trying to sell them anything. You shouldn't have been speaking at all. If I wouldn't have hit you, you'd have been drugged through the rest of the streets to a jail cell, and I wouldn't have come to help you. We would have just replaced I know you would die. You'd have just replaced you. You'd replace me with the spider. I would replace you with the remains of the contestant that I uh, battled in the opening round. That's 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 kind of mean. Posse just got this like tear rolled down his eyes. Sad, incredible Hulk music plays in the background. Uh. <laughs> you just kind of learn when not to say anything. According to you, that's never. Okay, let me rephrase that. You have to learn when you do speak not to say the wrong thing. Yeah, it ain't happen. Okay, then revert to previous statement. Failing that. <laughs> so Kite she- goes back to the alleyway to see how the others are doing. Does Ponzi follow? Yeah, he's afraid of getting hit again. 
<laughs> so, Kite Ponzi, you show up and you see um, Alwyn and Kai still sort of sitting there, like, uh, on the ground. Uh, Alwyn with this look of uh, absolute terror on his face, staring back at this intimidating-looking woman. Uh, Chloe has this glowing look of, oh my god, I get to see you again. And then there, uh, Kite, you recognize, you two both recognize this as the woman from The Sleepy Cat. All the way back in episode one. Before Kite actually says anything to Kira, uh, he sees Owen like completely terrified. So he gets his bright idea to go and change Owen's uh, mood from terrified to embarrassed. So he leans over. And he's like, you know, if you're going to pounce on anyone, I bet Chloe wishes it was her. But what? No! Chloe, make it... Oh, okay, yeah. And Alwyn goes bright red. <laughs> and then Kai looks and goes, you? Her? You like her? You like her! She looks at Kira, and Kira's like, no, no, not, not like that. So Kara's staring at, at Chloe like, what in the world are you even doing? And then, like, she looks back up, and she looks towards Kite and just simply gives him, like, a like a respectful nod. And then, like, looks towards Ponzi and just, just like, eye rolls and looks away. Kite, uh... So she, she, rec- she clearly recognizes the warrior of the group. Kaida uh, nods back and gives a smirk. I've learned to antagonize them. So I see. I like you. <laughs> you just hear, you do like her. No, I don't like her. I don't like her. You like her. I don't like her. You like her. <laughs> they're, going, they're going back and forth like they're like the teenage boys that they are. <laughs> the guards are gone, right? Good. We can go now, right? Are they gone? She looks towards Kite. Yeah, yeah, they they passed by. Uh, okay. They've encountered me before, and they're not going to mess with me. Good. Well, that's a relief. Thank you for handling that, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, encounters like that would be easier if I didn't have, uh, someone calling them, uh, idiots. But they were idiots. I'm aware. They aren't. They need to know. No. It's better if idiots don't know they're idiots. Because then they'll stop acting like them. At this point, Alwyn leans over to Kai and goes, Ponzi doesn't know he's an idiot. <laughs> Kira, you character. definitely hear that? Out of character, I wasn't saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for someone to take it. <laughs> like, Kira, you hear that with your cat hearing, so you absolutely hear Alwyn say that. <laughs> She leans down and like, and we don't need to tell him. Now shut up. And then Kai looks and goes, but do we tell them that he likes Chloe? He goes, oh, it goes red again. So Kai likes at everyone. I suppose uh, we can continue making our way. Uh, what time of day is it? Is it like past dusk it's right around dusk okay so um kite pulls a piece of flint and steel out of his pouch and like sort of tips his glaive over and strikes it and lights a little piece of tinder at the bottom of the hole in his glaive and the tinder lights up the gem and the gem emits a green like light for everyone to be able to see as they're walking through the alleys. It's a glow stick. 
Precisely. <laughs> and uh, all I needed to do was crack it across Punji's head. <laughs> where's our meeting point at again? Oh, sorry, go on. What was that? I just asked, where was our meeting point at again? You're going back to the royal boat. Which I still have yet to name, so if anyone has a name for it, go ahead. Chat, include, include you. Not you, Ponzi. <laughs> so, how are you making your way back to the boat? First things first, Chloe is going to make Kai invisible just in case. So That was the specific question I was asking there, because if not, I did have something for that. But you no longer have to make the stealth check skill challenge. Yay! So yeah, I, cla I cast invisibility on Kai. And she just tells her, like, stay close. It was, uh, I guess, good to see you all alive still. Glad oh, it's wonderful. I'm very happy I did not make certain arrangements as I lost a good amount of coin. Lost amount of coin on what? Sorry, what was that? I said never mind. Apparently, uh, Kira didn't uh, expect too much of us to be able to complete. I expect a lot from you. That they're still alive is kind of amazing. You have ah. no idea. <laughs> You're not. She she like gets it from your uh, from your tone. Like she looks at you like, wow, okay, I guess I was really closer than I thought it was. <laughs> Let's just say the merchant should stick to selling stuff and stay out of battle. Uh, yeah, you do notice that wherever Chloe is, Alwyn is as far as possible away from her. And she's the same at this point now, staying closer to Kira, she can help it. She looks down at you, because I don't think she's seen Llewellyn, has she? Well, she probably did, because he was in the tavern. Yeah, you, Llewellyn was making a scene in the tavern. You absolutely okay. have seen Lou. He always makes a scene. Okay, 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 gotcha, gotcha. So, she looks down at, at um, Chloe, and... Um, it, to everyone else who can see this... Because I'm actually assuming Chloe wouldn't notice. It looks like she wants to say something and continues to not. I'll roll for Alwyn because he is, uh, he's oblivious to everything else, but he might notice that. Yeah, he'll notice that. <laughs> I can't roll, he can't roll insight to save his life on anything involving Chloe, but this he gets. <laughs> I have a barrier across me, that's all. You, you have anti-Alwyn technology. So, you'll have to forgive me, but I have actually been following your escapades a little bit from far. Oh, I, I hoped so. Uh, I assumed you were somehow in the shadows, at least part of the way, just because, well, that seemed to be your nature, and you seemed rather good at it. The shadows are my friends. Only the shadow knows. Um, at this point, you just hear a, a disembodied voice, you know, Kai saying, I mean, I guess the shadows are a better friend than that. Oh, you can't see me. I'm pointing to Ponzi. <laughs> Ponzi's just fine. He's the reason he didn't die to that gelatinous cube. If he hadn't thrown himself in there and then cast a spell on it while he was inside of it, he never would have gotten out of it. Wait. Kara, like, stops dead in her tracks and just stares at you for a moment. You and stop abruptly, and Invisible Kai bumps into you. It's just like staring at both of, like, uh, Chloe and Ponzi for a moment as she mentions him being stuck inside a gelatinous cube. A.K.A. she hasn't gotten that letter yet. So, um... Like, Here, you, you want some... just like, what? Yeah, would you, would you like some gelatinous cube? Here's some right here off my shirt. No, I, I don't think it's good to eat the... It has a little bit of alcohol in it, I think. I thought you cleansed that out of it. Believe... 
Yeah, you did, Nora. Oh gosh. <laughs> Ponzi it, totally cleansed no, all the I didn't, alcohol. I didn't clearance the alcohol. Oh. Ancestors I thought about above, it. Uh, ancestors above Ancestors above me, is he still doubting those yellow shots? I think it's sort of his thing to sell alcohol. Oh, yeah. it, it gets the it gets the other sales going. You, you get them drinking and then they buy everything. Since you've that's, been with us, no one has bought anything. Actually, that's a good point. You say you're a salesman. I don't think I've witnessed you making one sale. Well, it's hard to sell when you're dealing with spiders and gelatinous cubes and rats and and you, you clowns. I mean, no one wants care. to buy stuff. They know. I mean, they normally don't carry spending money around with them. No, you just kill them and they give you coins sometimes. Oh, oh no! But, but I'm still trying to figure out how the spider had coins. But don't get me wrong. <laughs> He gave pretty much his entire inventory of jello shots to the king. I, I, oh. He mm -hmm. did, yeah. I, he he kind of royal decreed them from me. It wasn't fair. Yeah. Well, of course he did. You mentioned they had alcohol in them. Yeah, my dad does like to drink. You owe me. I pay you nothing. You owe me for not arresting you. We'll call it even. We will not call it even. Kite, Aren't you that drunk? Kite. You didn't arrest me. We're good. <laughs> Kite just stops, turns around, looks at Owen, looks at Ponzi. Don't hit me again. Enough, or I will turn this party back around. <laughs> Owen gets like super. Yes, Dad. Like, super sarcastic teenager. I will turn this party around, and you and you won't get to go on the ship. Yeah, you say that, Kai goes over, like, puts his invisible arm around you, and goes, Please don't, I don't want to go back there. Kai, they would just leave me. Kai turns around, starts walking again, but says over his shoulder so uh, Owen can hear him. If you want to sit there and mockingly call me dad, I can let your dad deal with this. He, he 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 thinks about it for a second, looks at you, looks at Kira, looks at you, thinks about it, reluctantly pops up. Oh, that reminds me. Uh Kite, Ponzi, should we tell the king about what happened? Can we leave out the part where I fall inside a jello cube? Absolutely not. Was that Alwyn? Yeah, I believe that is an important part of the uh, of the storyline here. Well, I'm more meant like Alwyn uh, getting gravely injured. Are you still feeling better, by the way? We leave that part out. I say that we do mention that the sewers were uh, prepared for someone to be traveling through them. Uh, I believe that we say what we saw inside. I say that we leave the Ponzi uh, part to uh, a nice little uh, drinking discussion. And then, uh, yes, we definitely leave Alwyn uh, basically going in for uh, strike and taking uh, a sewer nap out of it entirely. Yeah, uh, I, 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 I'm definitely okay. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I'm, de I'm definitely okay with that. Well, very well then. Honestly, I'll make things easier anyway. I'd worry. I'd, I'd be terrified of what your father would think if we left you get harmed. Uh, well, uh, he probably definitely... I, I'd probably be grounded for life and... Um... Yeah, we would. I, I really don't want. No, no, I, I can't be confined to the to the, to the keep. I can't. So kite just continues walking on towards the boat. Uh, with uh, with the invisibility spell on Kai, there is no alarm being raised. You guys make it back to the royal boat with no issues whatsoever. 
Uh, by the time you get back there, uh, the game, the uh, the suitor games are sort of done for this round for the day. So by the time you get back, uh, Beatrix and Sakata and the king, the queen, and the princess are all back by this point. Good timing for us. Also, once you get back on the ship, Chloe's going to end her concentration on the invisibility spell yeah. because that takes a little bit of mental control. So, once they get back on on the ship, actually, does Alwyn go with the party or does he go back like, to other places? He, the, the party has rooms on the ship, so he... he, he... Alwyn wants less to do with uh, all the royal political stuff as possible. He wants to like, go out and keep adventuring, so he's sticking mostly to kite like glue. Gotcha. Um, because once we hit the ship and uh, like get to a place that's more private, I guess, mm -hmm. she's going to do this thing where she kind of walks past Alwyn, like with her hands behind her back, and simply says, Prince, a word, if you would. And clearly keeps walking in a direction that she wants him to follow. Yeah. Alwyn looks up at Kite with this look of, can I trust her? I would suggest you go with her because I'm going to talk to your dad. <laughs> Alwyn scoots off and, and reluctantly follows the intimidating woman. Grub looks between them. It's like, uh, can I go with her instead of the reporting? What was that? Sorry. Uh, she, she's looking between basically Kira and, and Kai. Said, well, I could go with her instead of going to the reporting, right? You surely don't need me for that. You want to accompany the prince, I guess. Uh, I would go with Red. It's not about the prince. Mm. Never mind. I would actually prefer that you uh, escort Kai with me up to the king. Very well. What do you want me to do? Stay out of trouble. We're in the world actually everything that we found with the drugs, Ponzi. You should come with us too. You are the okay. most experienced to talk about those. Fair. At least I have some use to you. No, no, you are very, very good at making sure that my stick is still in one piece. Um. And with that, we will cut over to Kira and the Prince. So, so. Kira walks into some place that has nobody there. Probably, yeah, it's not that hard to find. It's just a right. huge traveling houseboat that the royal family uses. Right. And without changing, like, um, without changing, like, any type of mood or, like, mannerism or anything like that, she just kind of stops and just simply says, I understand that you have an interest in my race. He, he, he looks and stops and um, And, and he is has like he has this look of is this confused look of is she mad because they said like Chloe like he has no clue what you're talking about right uh, she knows that he he was speaking about um her right but, before right right but that was right after they had uh, freed him from the fanatics camp so right, he true, doesn't yeah. know what you are right so she look she looks down at him. As he's not saying anything back to him. And um, how did you pronounce that again? Lagoose? Lagoose, thank you. She, she waits and waits. It's yeah. like, the Lagoose, you moron. <laughs> what? You're, 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 you're Lagoose? She tilts her head as if that's actually like shocking to her. <laughs> like, really? Okay, so yes. I I didn't think any Lagoos would, would, would come up here. I, I thought they, they hated us. Don't stop thinking that. 
there's reasons I'm here. Not the least of which is to gather some information about certain things. But as I was saying, I understand you are interested in my race in a way that is different than I've seen in royalty before. Why? Why? Well, I guess it's just... It's normally, just... yes, why? Because normally royalty just wants to continue to push us further away from society. So the fact that I found one who doesn't makes me interested. Wait, how do you know I don't? I may have overheard a conversation that you had in the forest. Uh, okay. I forget, did he see the panther? No, he did not. Okay. So he looks and goes, um, okay, um, well... I guess the, the the answer is because it's the right thing. You should you should be you know exiled to the farthest reaches of, of our land just because the idiots who who live in here in in, in this in, in Darion tried to exile you and you, that, that you shouldn't still be suffering that and, and there's no reason for it. So how has one as young as you come to this conclusion? Because again, I point out to you that any royalty I've come across or seen has reached the exact opposite conclusion. They are also older than you, which makes me think that what you are talking about is a phase. They're also greedier than I think. And Fair. that's the worst part of, of, of all this nobility is that Every single one of them will do whatever it takes to put people down so they can keep their money and their power. Why do you think this stupid tournament to, to, to figure out who's going to marry my sister is happening? Because none of them want to let the, let the princess pick who she wants to marry. They all want to try and marry into my family so they can have some sort of power. It's stupid, it's ridiculous, and I don't like it. So what do you plan to do about it, young one? I haven't got that far. Like, I never imagined I would ever actually see... A, a, a lagoon in the in the flesh, and, and so I, I I never got that far. I mean, I I personally like I don't know how much you know about Lagaria, but uh, even as the firstborn, as a male in the royal family, my power is very limited. But understand, I'm it's... sure between you know convince I can convince my mother, and if I can't convince my mother, I can certainly convince. That's who you kind of cut out there. Oh, I said, uh, if I if I can't convince my mother, I can certainly convince my sister. You convince them to do what exactly? Like, what do you, what do you think you can get royalty in this world to do? I know you are, but as you said, this is a queendom, and you're a prince. I I, I don't know, but to, maybe just to to. to... Even just to send someone out, me, to, to, to go talk to, to, to you and, and the rest of your, your people, just to sort of extend some sort of olive branch. I, I don't know. I, I haven't gotten that far. I just know, like, from what I've read, what happened to you guys isn't right. Just like this stupid tournament isn't right. All these archaic things that have happened, they're just not right. What happened to my tribe isn't right. Even if it was thousands of years ago, or whatever it was. <laughs> Even if it was so long ago, my ancestors still weep for what happened. I've come out searching for answers. I believe I'm going to be along with you for some time now. Because I believe you can help me get answers and information I seek. Are you agreeable to that? Because if you're not, I'll do it anyway. <laughs> he laughs. I was, about to, I was about to say, does it matter if I say yes or no here? I was really just wanting to know your temperament for the whole process. <laughs> <laughs> he looks and goes, I mean, I'll, I'll find, I'll, get, I'll, I'll, I'll 
see what I can do to help. I don't know what information I'll be able to help you get. I mean, I have access to certain things, absolutely, but that doesn't mean I can get, so I get you in there, but I can certainly do what I can. She looks at nods. Like, well, thank you, Prince. Yeah. You are turning out to be a lot more reasonable than I thought. All royal please, could be. And, and please, the only time you have to refer to me as Prince is when you're in the presence of my parents. All when it's fine. Very well, all when. You notice she does. She flips to that real quick. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, as someone else might be slightly like, like, uh, okay. She's just like, very well, Alvin. <laughs> and with that, we will switch over to the rest of the crew. Uh, so that will be Kite, Ponzi, Chloe, Llewellyn, and Kai heading to meet the king. I like the Llewellyn's a party member. King Adeline. Uh, the, uh, Agalia and Arabella are not here. It's just Adeline. So, as they're walking in, Chloe's actually, like, she's playing with her, like, one of her, her braids quite a bit, and clearly a bit distracted as they're walking in. So, they walk in, and uh, Adeline, being Adeline, just looks, aha, you're back. So, he looks, and he doesn't, he doesn't address you, Chloe, but he's staring right at you when he says it. How's that boy of mine? Oh, Alwyn's not dead. I... Why would he be dead? He's not dead. I would hope he wouldn't be dead. That's why I sent him with you. Why would you be saying he would be dead? Well, sire, uh, the sewers seem to be expecting company. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what the Duke had in mind, but there, there were definitely creations down there. So, things that shouldn't be in sewers? Uh, actually, to be more specific, uh, things that were magically altered to guard a location were purposely put into those sewers. Now the question is, is it to keep people from getting in, or to keep people from getting out? That's precisely what I asked. And as he says that, he looks at Kai. I recognize you. And Kai's just like, <laughs> like bowing and like super nervous in front of the king. Because like the last time the king saw him, Kai was kind of beating the shit out of his son. Kai sort of looks over at Kai. The more nervous you are, the more he's going to make you even more nervous. At this point, Adam looks and goes, "What do you? What do you know?" Last time I saw you, you were kicking the crap out of my kid. And now you're here in front of me, trying to talk to me like nothing happened. And Kai just goes pale. So, Adelaide looks at you as, he's the only one? There weren't any others. Uh, at least according to what we heard, it sounds like the other uh, slaves that were down there, the other gladiators, uh, that they were taken away? Or the purpose wasn't very clear. Kite, Kite sort of looks over at Kai. You want to redeem yourself? Talk to him. Tell him what you told us. Uh, okay. Um, uh, I, I can. And Otto one looks, before you do that, Puffin stuff! Got any more of those jiggly cubes? I, ha I have a special one. You give that to the king, you will get the other end of the glaive. This one's special, it's not that one! I don't know why it looks, oh, one of those, huh? And you just hear the kink of the sword being, like, unlatched from the sheath. Why does everyone hate there better not be any of that jello shot, we'll call it, left. There's none of that jello shot. I didn't make it into jello shots. I made it into other things. 
<laughs> so Adeline goes and grabs whatever. But what's the, what flavor is the Jello shot today? I love how we made Jello shots a thing here. Strawberry. Okay, so he looks. Oh well, not the yellow ones we had last time, but anybody else want one? I can't be the only one. Actually, I, I think I might take one. He hands you one. Anybody else want to drink with the king? Kite sort of pulls a flask off of his belt. <laughs> Not that I'm opposed to drinking with you, sire. I just don't trust that guy. Uh, Kill me the last time, so. So, Kai, Kai looks goes, okay, can, can, can I have one? As long as you don't tell like, my son, because he's about your age, he'll get mad if you got to have one and he didn't. So you all sit there and, and, and do a shot with the king. Kind of awesome. <laughs> Chloe, it make really me, is, actually. Yeah. Chloe, do me a favor. Make me a constitution saving throw. Yeah, I do. <laughs> the question is, is, does Ponzi drink his own jello shot with the king? Oh, absolutely. That's part of being a good businessman. Uh, I wrote so low. Chloe, uh, you feel a little dizzy and woozy, and everything seems to be moving in, like, Slow motion. But, but you, you want to know the secret, Kai? What, what, what's the, the, the secret? Yeah, you, the, the one you're supposed to drink, you, you water down so that you don't get drunk as fast. I gave Chloe the extra special ones. Wait. And he has this revelation. Ponzi, make me an insight check. Kai, you can too if you want to. No, because right now, Kite is sort of, uh, nudge, like, poking at Llewellyn to come over to him. Okay, first things first, Ponzi, you 100% know that the revelation that Kai just came to is he thinks you're trying to get Chloe drunk so she admits she likes the prince. That's exactly <laughs> what I'm doing! <laughs> Llewellyn does flap over. Ah, yes, can I help you, Sir Kite? Can you, uh... Can you open up to any sort of whispers in uh, Llewellyn's book ear? Can you open up to an Dear. eye test? Uh, um, I, I certainly can. Give me a second. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, yeah. the, the ear, you, it's a dog-eared page that you whisper into. <laughs> so, Jimmy's like, I love that and I hate it at the same time. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, it offends my senses. Kite <laughs> holds up Llewellyn. Chloe, can you read these letters from left to right? Wait, are there, like, are there letters on the page? He's yeah, Llewellyn is an eye test at this point. Oh, dear. So, Chloe's looking at these letters. What are you talking about? I'm an expert read... The ink's le leaking a little bit. Uh, and she starts reading them down, and she, like, stumbles on a few of them. Uh, but she generally gets it right, but she keeps pausing like she has to kind of squint real hard. The letters keep moving just a little bit. Are, Lou, are you doing that on purpose? Lou is open wide, so he can't actually uh, say anything right now. Thanks, Lou Allen. Pause I should smack you. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> hold on, hold on. <laughs> Chloe, can you read the letters? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to respond to that. <laughs> but yes, that's basically what Llewellyn looks like. Gotcha, and that's... What a strange flag. It was the first picture I found, okay? So she reads through them slowly, but she actually does get to the end of it. Yeah, she's not drunk, she's just buzzed. Right, she's, tipsy. she's had a little bit of alcohol before. So at this point, Kai uh, goes, yeah, um, so uh, I, 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 I absolutely can. Um, so, um, basically what happened is, uh, like a couple of weeks ago, 
uh, these these two people they they started coming down to, to, to the quarters. Uh, a, a small hooded figure, kind of about his size, and points to Ponzi, and then a taller one, uh, a female, and, and they they were talking about. Um, well, they would come down and they were they, they, they would take fighters up. And it started off they would take the biggest, the, the biggest looking, the bulkiest, and then they just started taking taking different people. And it was like one a day, and, and none of them ever came back. And and every now and then I could hear them talking, and they were talking about the Duke's condition and, and how long the process was taking. Uh, I also they I also remember them taking some meeting some sort of proper vessel or something, and, and I don't really know much about that. Um, yeah. That's kind of, kind of what was there. I mean, I haven't been here too, too long. I, 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 I kind of, I, I got sold here about six months ago. So what do you think, sir? Looks well. All of that is extremely concerning. Both whatever they're doing to the fighters and the fact that the Duke has some sort of condition. I mean, it does make sense. We've been here over a week and we haven't seen Ashton once. It is rather mysterious. Uh, we kind of wondered if maybe the prisoners were being used as guinea pigs or something. Uh, but we have no evidence of that, of course. Does, does Duke have any conditions that you know of, sire? Even if he did, then he would admit to us, because he's not going to show any anyway. And we don't have evidence that they're being experimented on or being used as guinea pigs. But we can surmise as much based on what you found at that campsite and the den under the, under the alleyway. I mean, these are definitely peanuts. And, and Owen looks, you said you were sold here six months ago. Kai, you said your name wasn't, you know, it was, I know it's a hard thing, but do you mind if I ask who sold you here? Why? He looks and, um, well, I mean, I was sort of born into it. I, 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 and ever since a young age, I was, I was sort of groomed. To, to, to fight when 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 he learned I could and uh, and apparently he, he the guy who sold me here he he, he owed Grayfort money or, or whatever and so I was sort of the the, the payment for whatever that was I guess um, and then he looks at his, and and, and the, the man who who sold me is is a man who goes by the name of, of uh, Everett Crate and Kite that is the name you recognize. Adeline also seems to recognize the name, but doesn't say anything. He goes, all right. So he looks at Kai, he goes, all right, here's, what's gonna, here's what we're going to do. You're here, you're with us now. You're going to be fine, you're safe. We're going to get you a hot food, a shower, and if you want to change your calls, we'll get that. And uh, he, and as he says that, he sort of says, he, he whispers something, and a couple of, uh, a couple of uh, servants sort of come in and, and sort of like sh take Kai off and show him where he needs to go, like get all washed up and rested up and all that. Well, just looking after Kyla because he's going, oh, you poor thing. Once Kyla leaves, Adelwine looks at you three and goes, if Gray Fort is even in any relationship with Creighton, that's very bad. Wait, Clayton, the person, you know the person he talked about, sire? I know the reputation of the man he talked about. What's the reputation? Nothing good. And based on your reaction when he said the name, Sir Kite, you know him too. I know of him. I don't know him personally, and... To be frank, if I wouldn't know him personally, he probably wouldn't be around. Yeah. Same here. Luckily, he's never messed with my tribe. 
not saying something because he messes with everything. I think it's more the, the location than anything. Fair. So, this is a lot of stuff to process. Kai is going to be the biggest thing we have right now. So, I think... I think what, what needs to happen is we need to send a small convoy back to Argenti. We need to stay here for the whole, you know, making sure we save face and all that. But I think sending a small crew back to the royal capital to get Kai back there safely is a very good idea. What should we do in the meantime, Yeah, Yeah, sire? He looks, you're the crew going back to Argenti. A second thought that should have been rather obvious. <laughs> well, you're feeling the effects of uh, one of those delicious, delicious jelly, jelly cubes. He reaches in just, he knows where they are. This boy just goes in and grabs another one and just... <laughs> <clears throat> So, I think what makes sense is to send a small convoy back. You three, Alwyn, you'll need someone to get you back in the palace, even though you're on the boat. Uh, Kai, and we send you guys back to Argenti to set him up to be safe, because Kai will not be safe as long as he remains within the walls of Eagle's Guard. I know it's a lot to ask, but is that something you're willing to do? Can I think on it for the night? Of course you can. Is Kira going to go with us? Who is Kira? She's a wonderful person uh, that we met when this all started, and she was going to help us liberate your son. Uh, but then she disappeared for a while, presumably stalking us from the shadows. Uh, I'm, I'm going to stop you right there. I have never met this person, and you said that she was stalking my son from the shadows. Oh, no, no, she was stalking Absolutely us. not. But she's a wonderful person. Sire, if it's for anything... She would be much benefit to our party uh, for combat purposes. I'll have to think about it. Please do, Your Highness. At this point, all the line goes over to Kite, smacks him on the back, and goes, Alwyn's going to be disappointed that that one's smitten with this Kira person. Wait, sorry, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> and then he walks out of the room, leaving Ponzi, Kite, and uh, Chloe. Oh, I, I need to know what, she's, what he said. What he... <laughs> Kite, Kite looks at Chloe. He's like, man, before you're out of here, the king's going to have you in a love pentagon. <laughs> <laughs> you, see, you see Llewellyn she looks and goes, oh, crap. And you look, and he starts, he starts erasing the ink because he was clearly drawing a square. And you can see on points, you see a C, you see an A, you see a K. Who are the other two points? <laughs> we don't know yet. But Kite turns and walks out of the room. At this point, um, you all walk out of the room. It's about the same time that Kira and the prince walk out from their little meeting. So you all sort of convene in this sort of like big master hallway. Kite just looks at everyone. You'll have to excuse me. And he just walks off. Uh, good, good night. Uh, yeah. Um, I should probably go show my mom, my, my folks I'm okay. So he, he just sort of like runs off like back towards like the royal suite. Oh, mm -hmm. uh. That leaves uh, that leaves Kira, Ponzi, and a buzzed Chloe. 
Where are you going, Kiara? Oh. I guess I did plan to find a room on this ship. You could stay in my room. Uh, she looks no, over at you. There's only one bed in the room. That would not make I, any sense. I don't mind. I, I mean, we could share. Well, I don't mind. So she, she Kira looks down at you, Chloe, and he's just like, you know, for someone who refers to themselves as offensively unremarkable, you certainly are assertive. Uh, I, I guess I'm not that remarkable. True. Still, I appreciate the sentiment, but I'm much better sleeping alone. Uh, I see. But don't uh, worry. I'll be close by. That's um. That's good to know. But um, don't worry. Anything comes at us during the night time, we'll be ready. And if not, it'll be a good night's rest. I, su I suppose so. Um, I'll I'll go back to my room now. Uh. If you need anything, uh, well, you teach it up, you know, um, I'm going to go now. Bye. She starts so trying. Like, as she starts trying off, Kira actually steps in front of her. Oh. Uh, and Chloe kind of looks away. Question. What do you think you might offer me? And I'm not saying you're worthless. Not at all. I'm just curious what you think you could do for me. Do for you? You just said if I needed anything. Uh, well, I mean, I do have some magical ability. Uh, I know you maybe aren't the greatest of speaking to the different royalty people here, maybe. I'm not sure, but I could maybe get well, things that's, for that's you. A very productive conversation. You, you did? Yes. He's a lot um, more le level-headed than most any other royalty I've seen so far. He's also very young. It's easier to talk to them. Uh, if you say so, I honestly couldn't find him to be more of a dunderhead. Love it. You may be asking the wrong questions. Besides, he was interested in my kind. He was? Yes, he wants to find out some of the same information I want to find out. I see. Uh, what information is that? Oh, just about a lot of things that happened to my ancestors. Well, if you'd like to discuss it, I actually am something of a least local expert on uh, Lagoo's history, at least so much as what I've read that you've had access to. I've, oh. I've done an awful lot of studying on it. I have you now. Okay. So what is it that I'm supposed to do? Like, why don't we start there, just so I know. What is it that my kind is known for? Known for? Since you're uh, such a scholar on my, my kind, after all, I figured a question like that should be easy for you to answer. Well, it kind of depends, so she adjusts her glasses on, on, on what you mean by known for. Uh, you could potentially talk about the biological differences, uh, your various tribes that you have, uh, the different animals you're able to transform into, okay, uh, a so remarkable there ability. There uh, but there's also that's, the political... I'm that's sorry? What, that's what I was looking for. You know about that, the fact that we are connected to our inner beasts, if you will. Oh, indeed. It's, it's a fascinating trait of yours. So let me ask you, what do you think I am? You have such insight into us. Who you are as a person, or you mean you are a... My your tribe. beast, uh... Well, judging by at least your propensity for the shadows, and also by the shape of your ear, she turns her head, uh, 
honestly, I would connect you to be more with the feline tribe. You don't look clearly, no offense, large enough uh, for the like lions quite, but definitely the definitely the uh, the cats maybe one two are more prone for stealth. So after you say all that, she just smirks like real large, and then right in front of you, just changes into her panther form. You clearly like do all these hand claps things like, oh my, uh, oh, it's, I never thought I could see, oh, I, I, do I pet? And I believe Ponzi's I, still I, in the room to see this, by the way. Yes, Ponzi, you are in the room to watch this, unless you left. Oh, Ponzi's just sitting here quietly observing. <laughs> oh, Ponzi, real quick, give me a perception check. As you're sitting there watching this, you just see a hand sneak in from a, a, a hidden door and grab another shot. As the, as the king's hand just sneaks in, grabs another shot, and just... <laughs> Nothing else of what's going on, just, he just grabs the shot. Yeah, no, the king, like, the, the, all the king does is, like, there's a, secret, there's a secret compartment door behind where Ponzi is sitting. That just unlocks it, the hand comes in, grabs the shot, shuts the door, and takes it. Ponzi's sitting so, here looking at his, his stash and he's kind of like, um, I'm going to have to go to the kitchen and make more. <laughs> so as... Uh, looks up, as, sees sees the, the transformation, looks back down at the jello shots, takes another one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not drunk enough for this yet. <laughs> right. So um, Kira actually like slowly like, uh, like um, pads around uh, Chloe, and gets like kind of like uh, s- clearly sniffs at her a lot, and then after and Chloe's after, all excited, after like a minute, like she comes back out of it, and just starts walking away, and's like, "This is just in case I needed to find you." Like basically, I've got your scent now. And, and she, Chloe just kind of like flutters flabbergasted with that, and she oh. then just actually walks off to find a room for herself. But the, thank, thank you. Yeah. So uh, she walks off. Uh, as you walk off, uh, Chloe, you notice that Llewellyn isn't in the room. Does and, she uh, notice? Okay. Uh, maybe, maybe I don't know. So Chloe, I mean uh, Kira, you're walking through, and the book is flying behind you, and you clearly hear the book flying behind you. She keeps walking for a little ways, um, clearly in a manner that's trying to get like, trying to get to a spot that's not going to be hurt, observed easily enough. Yeah. Yeah. And she she does that thing where she turns down the hallway, and when Llewellyn comes flapping towards her, like you know, he, he turns down the hallway and comes immediately directly face to face with her. Ah, don't do that. You. You. This is the strangest set of circumstances I could possibly imagine. Yeah, absolutely, considering the phrase you uttered in the room. You did notice. Yes, this makes it much easier for me to do this. And he spits out four envelopes and hands them to you. (laughs) It would be one at this point, but yeah, like, (laughs) yes, I know. Thank you, though. I'm meaning to read the last, I read the last one, so I figured... Yeah. He, he talks like a deer, like or, or whatever. Yeah. He looks goes, and I'm rather enjoying this, so I'm going to see how long it takes them out to figure this out. How are you? Oh, I have to keep myself entertained somehow. Huh. Because you really, are, you really are as weird as she was describing in her letters. I mean, it's quite entertaining for me to watch her get all tongue tied in front of the, the, the handsome young prince and then spill everything she knows in front of you. It's a fair point. He actually chuckles at this. Is like, like finally has some release to anything. <laughs> like, fair enough. How in the world did we meet together in the first place? How did these letters get to me? That I have no idea. Because all I know is that one day I find 
a letter in you know where letters come from from the carrier and it's not addressed to anybody specifically and because i'm curious i opened it up and it's from this chloe an unremarkable human that's just reaching out to ask anybody about my race my tribe yes she, and she, yet, she does that and yet despite the crassness of my initial response she continued to to send letters she has a very hard time understanding when people are trying to tell her to stop or go away. I've noticed. Yes. Uh, she's adorable, but uh, obliviousness is definitely there's there's a reason there's a reason that the professor at the at the school sent me to be with her because I'm at least much less oblivious than she is. Yes. I don't know what it is, but when I walked around her felt something something I've not actually considered before that I might actually care about the well-being of a human well I know it's not saying much this but there are two humans a half elf and a gnome here you should care about. The gnome is questionable. The warrior is respectable. That would be the half elf. Yes. It's not just humans in general. It's the entirety of this world pushing us away. Have pushed us away since what they did to our ancestors. I want to know why. And I want revenge. And yet I run in, the first royalty I run into is suddenly on the same page as I am. Not to make a pun on your behalf, but... Oh, I appreciate any and all book puns. Oh, okay, good. Uh, trust me, it's okay, I have the spine for it. <laughs> At least you're a pretty hard cover. <laughs> yes, but anyway, I should be getting back. It's about now time, even in her semi-drunken stage, you probably noticed I'm missing. Yes. Um, one thing. Could you maybe make sure she doesn't run into any more gelatinous cubes? That was a little... I'll be honest, that was the first time that I felt genuinely worried. Oh, you think that's bad? You should have seen what it did to the gnome. I don't want to know. He goes, oh, I can show you. And he flips to the back of the book, and there's a drawing that clearly Llewellyn has been, like, using magic to make ink appear on himself. And there's just a picture of the giant cube just expectorating Ponzi into the wall. <laughs> I might need one of his shots by the end of the evening. Anyway. You, you, you might have to work um, quick. The, the, the king seems to enjoy them very much. Indeed. Anyway, she looks over and she's, like, found a room, like, right there. Yeah. Like, this will be perfect. Yeah, so Llewellyn, be Llewellyn flaps back over to where uh, Chloe and Ponzi was. But, uh, Kite! You walked out, left and walked off a little bit. Where are we headed? To look for one of two people. Okay, which, which I, I'm pretty sure I know one. I don't know the other one. I'm either looking for the princess or the Beatrix to ask where the princess is. <laughs> uh, you, you come across Beatrix first. She is a little bit easier to find. Ah, so kite. Miss Beatrix? And what can I help you with this evening? I uh, was wondering if you could inform me where the princess is. I believe she's retired to her quarters for the evening. Would you mind escorting me to see if she is still uh, welcome to visitors? I will absolutely do as much. And you guys walk off in silence. She gets to the door. Well, knocky knocky. Can you hear the. Yes? Uh, princess, you have someone who wishes to visit with you. 
and you hear the, the sigh of, there's only one person. I know it's the one person you took. Okay, let them in. So she opens the door, and um, you see Arabella there. Uh, still, like, for someone who's retired to her quarters, she's still wearing the clothes you would have seen her with wearing at the event. So clearly she was expecting you. Sorry, I'm a bit later than uh, would be appropriate. She looks, considering the idiots you were babysitting, I'm surprised you're back at all today. And you can clearly tell she's implying both Ponzi and her brother. Trust me, I'm shocked we're back at all. So what brings you here tonight? I was actually wondering how the first day of the, the event has gone. Pretty much as expected, the mercenaries who can be paid hefty amounts of money by the richer nobles, uh seem to be moving on quite briskly and swiftly. And the champion who was hired by the Duke is making swift work of anyone and everyone she encounters. So, we found one prisoner. Only one. Only one. And her dad wants us to escort him out of the kingdom, out of the walls, for safety. It's probably the smartest move. I would not disagree. But you didn't come here to tell me what my dad's plans were, did you? I came here to discuss them. See, my concern is if I assist in uh, escorting Kai to safety would be several days trip and that the event would be over before I could return. It probably would be. And you know very well I'm not going to let you meet that fate. Well, just because the event's over doesn't mean everything is lost, because the other part of the tradition involving the Royal Suitor Games is once the event is over, there is a welcome to the family party at Cinderbrook Keep in Argenti. If anything were to happen, the Duke would be stupid to do it. I'm not, I'm not so concerned about the Duke doing something stupid there. But I can't let you wet his son. I mean, I don't want to do that any more than you want me to do it. There's only so much we can do. And then she thinks for a second, and a devious smile crosses her face. Make me an insight check. You are asking a lot of kite. I know I am. Wow. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Um, you immediately track the hold smile. On. Hold on. Can we just say uh, once again, sort of like how uh, the prince can not uh, hit any insight checks for Chloe, but he can for something else. This is like yep. the only thing that kite can hit. Yep. Yeah, you absolutely clock the smile, and you immediately know what the smile means. So she looks and goes, well, there is one other way to stop it. But it wouldn't be pretty. Please don't tell me that's what you're thinking. She smiles and goes, I'm not through here, but uh, if you happen to be in Argenti when we return, 
and you know that there's this big celebration coming. And she just sort of doesn't say anything, but implies heavily. <laughs> but where on earth would I get a distraction to do that? She looks at you. She goes, Well... We have a penguin, right? A penguin. Your plan is a Oh, penguin. that was his name, isn't it? Oh, oh, oh. You mean Ponzi. Great. Oh, that's right. I thought you called him Poppin. Isn't that a type of a penguin? We don't know his name, so, you know, call him whatever you okay. wish. Okay, we have a distraction in the shape of a gnome. Because what better distraction is there than a room full of disgustingly jiggling alcoholic jelly cubes? But he'll know something is up if I request that of him. Well, I mean, we need a fall guy. And let's be honest. You don't think my dad's not going to have him do that anyway? So all I need to do is convince him to make it a little stronger. Or convince my dad to have him make, well, convince him to make it a little stronger. It shouldn't be too hard. Well, we do know your dad can handle his liquor better than pretty much anyone else in the kingdom. That he can. That he can. Save for maybe Ponzi. It's shocking that they get along as well as they do. It's shocking that anything gets along with Ponzi as well as your dad does. And that is true. Also, speaking of that, has either my brother or that wi uh, wizard friend of yours realized that they like the other one yet? I think they are both so obnoxiously apparent about it, it baffles me that neither one realizes it. Alwyn has never been the sharpest knife in the drawer when it comes to things like that. He means well. Chloe's actually been a big help, so I, I cannot fault her for that. And And besides, maybe it's best that she's not distracted by, you know, another. And, and there is a very uh, <laughs> self-aware pause <laughs> that Clint gets as he's saying that. Perhaps it's better to have fewer distractions. The wrong distractions, yes. So to answer your question, I think you should escort Kai back to Argenti and then wait for us to get back after the tournament is over when we can finalize plans. Okay, I will have the talk with your father in the morning. I assume you mean about escorting Kai back and not the other thing. What other thing? And he gives a wry smile. <laughs> <laughs> she gives one right back. Does anybody else have anything they would like to do this evening on the boat? Okay, we'll move to the next morning. Uh, go ahead and uh, long rest, so recover your HP, get your spell slots back, do all that fun stuff. Half your hit back dice. Get back that transformation I blew on a scene for no reason. 
You vote yeah. for the right reason. So you are, are again woken up, uh, Kira included, because she's miraculously here, to another fantastic royal breakfast. Um, this time, unlike the last one, which was basically like full English, this one uh, is much sweeter. It's more like, you know, like your, your, your sweet rolls, uh, your, you know, they wouldn't call them pancakes, but basically a pancake variant, things of that nature. Llewellyn is still getting himself uh, bathed in royal ink because he's now a spoiled little book. And I don't think Chloe had enough. I don't think Chloe had enough to get a hangover at all. No, no, she was she not was buzzed. She wasn't drunk. <laughs> exactly. But she probably still does get up, and she's like a little bit quiet minded because she feels like she might have spoken a little too freely in the previous. Night. <laughs> so she goes in there, and she like kind of sits alone. She's not sure. Who to sit by between like Kira and the prince, and so she's kind of sitting Kira alone. Kira's made sure she's sitting alone, like, like not like far away from everybody, but you know, like at that kind of position where she's she's in a good enough position that anyone can talk to her if they want to, but they're not close enough that you know that I'm by you. Well, somebody is going to come up and talk to you, Kira. Okay, uh, and it's going to be. I will put the picture up in case you forgot what he looks like. It will be the king huh. who comes and sits down next to you. She she gives this hesitant look for a moment, takes a breath, and is like, Good morning, your majesty. Good morning. You must be the Kira that they spoke of. Well, Chloe spoke of and wouldn't shut up about it. Yes, that is my name. I'm not sure if I'm exactly this... One that Chloe would not shut up about, but I'm going to have to assume that that is, in fact, the same person. Something about stalking them in the shadows. Anyway. It wasn't stalking. It was watching. Still weird. Well, but that's not why I'm here. They didn't need my help. Pragmatic. I like that. But uh, Sir Kite speaks highly of your prowess. He is a warrior. I am a warrior. It's nice that he recognizes that. And has uh, requested that you are allowed to help out on the mission I've asked them to go on. I'm coming over here to ask if you want to join. Oh, I had already planned to, even though I'm, I'm not necessarily privy to their mission parameters. They uh, have ways of getting information I'm already seeking, so... I was planning on following them regardless. Yes, my son has informed me. And I'm not sure how much you know about me. Sadly, not nearly as much as I would uh, care to admit. I'm an outsider to Ligari. I came here 30 years ago to take part in the Royal Suitor Games as a way to test my luck and my skills. Well, I won, so here I am. Oh, that is how your society does things, isn't it? It's a weird way of doing things, but it is the tradition that they have done, and, well, my wife's also hot as hell. Right. But you don't care about it. Not quite, no. So... He has informed me to what you're looking into. He has always said what he learned as he learned about the history of Garia and what happened to you and your tribes, that he wished there was something he could do. And I again, like him, don't have as much power as a male here, but I have more than he does, and I can at least authorize some access to some information. So So she gives that like that arched brow look. Like, you're really offering to help me right now. Okay. It may... He looks and goes, I know you probably don't believe a word of what I'm saying. And I'll be honest. The reason probably nobody here has lifted a finger to help you guys is because 
your tribes have stayed isolated. They, you haven't come up and bothered anybody. So most of Ligaria has probably forgotten you even exist. I'm starting to get that impression myself, actually. And maybe that is for the best. Maybe it's best that we keep apart. Maybe not. Maybe it is, but at the same time. That is actually not something I seek. As far as bringing the worlds together, I don't care about that. I just want to know why. Maybe we can accomplish both. Maybe we can accomplish the why. While also, I'm not saying everybody has to merge together. There is much we can learn from the camaraderie that your tribes show, from what I understand. If you have any idea of my nature, not just as my tribe, but as a warrior, you may understand I'm a little rusty on the whole diplomatic course of action. <laughs> Adeline smiles at you and goes, the only reason half the people listen to me when it comes to diplomacy is two things. One, my sword's bigger than theirs, and two, my wife is hotter than them. Oh, and she's the queen. Fair enough. Translation, I'm not good at being diplomatic either, but I behave because I have to. If you wouldn't mind helping I, me escort the yeah, I will help to our gen team. Once we return, I can I'll help you permission. Thank you. I'm I'll help. I will be here. Again, there's um I have other reasons for wanting to follow this group. Oh. Honestly, one of them I can't quite explain. Yeah. I've got that a lot with this group of people. I can't explain a lot of it either. Right. I mean, obviously, most of us can't explain the actions of the one who sells things. But I meant there's just something strange about. I don't know. Oh, I believe that feeling is shared by at least one other person. I mean, he won't admit it, but my son is smitten with that one. So I've noticed. Yeah. And he starts laughing. He goes, it's, I'm not going to lie, I like embarrassing him. Like, you mention her name and he'll just go beat bread. It's great. <laughs> Want to see it right now? I've noticed the scent quite easily. No, it's fine. <laughs> oh, I want to see it. He, so he, he gets up, he goes, walks over, slaps his hand on Alwyn's back. Hey, told Chloe good morning yet? Beat red. And like looking over at Chloe, all of would see her like she's shoveling pancakes into her mouth because she's yeah. so hungry with stress, yeah, and she's see, like, "You see this, Dad?" <laughs> Sorry, oh, I will stick with you. I have no one. So, Kite, you definitely watch uh, the King go and have a conversation with Kira. You said you were going to talk to him in the morning. Are you waiting till after breakfast, or...? Oh, yeah. Kite was actually... Like, Kite would have actually came in while the king was talking to... Uh, Kira? Kira. Uh, but when Kite enters, he does not uh, sit next to where the king would be sitting or next to uh, the princess. He actually goes and sits next to Beatrix. She, she, she sits there looking... This is a surprise. Why is it a surprise? I figured you'd be sitting next to the princess. And there are reasons that I should be sitting next to the princess, but I also... Uh, I have to be able to uh, build our trust as well, given your status for... Uh, Guarding the princess. 
Well, so far, you've given me no reason not to trust you. You managed to stay alive with both the prince and his pig-headedness, and whatever the heck Ponzi tries to do. Okay, yes, I have your respect on the battlefield. Does the princess talk to you yet? She talks to me about lots of things. You'll have to be slightly more specific. Has she talked to you since last night? Since I talked to her? If you're asking me if she spoke to me about the conversation you two had, we discussed it previously. It might have been my idea that I slipped it to her. And you trust me well enough for that to happen? I know what will happen if the Duke gets his paws into this family. My job is to keep Arabella safe. And to me, after this whole farce happens, the safest, the best way to keep her safe is to keep her as far away from Argenti as possible. But what does that mean for you? It means I might go with you, I might not. Well, if you don't, do you know you can't stay here? You won't be safe either. Whoever succeeds in kidnapping, <clears throat> in, in doing this, will be public enemy number one for the entire community. It would be a very hard road for them to garner support. Especially in Andari. There is one other way out for you. Oh, there is. After all, the princess would not be here. Someone would have to go looking for her. So you're saying I would be the bounty hunter looking for the bounty that i know where it exists that just so happens to be in the opposite direction of where you go <laughs> oh you are a devilish one well i mean come on we know the duke and no doubt he would trust you to go alone yeah so this is just me, uh, if that were to happen. Um, I, would I would use the logic of to the Duke. The last place you would expect them to go would be back to Andari, so that's where we should look. In reality, you should 100% go to Niamende. Because there are people, there's ways to garner support there. If you can find a way to break through the eternal clouds, give them back their water and their, their sun to, to quench the everlasting rain, that would be huge. We'll have to determine which route we go when I return. Have the discussion with the princess. Have the plan in place. I will Absolutely. be in touch. Absolutely. I assume you will be escorting the young master Kai back to Argentina? Yes. Uh, I, I believe in, in terms of importance, this is the second most important task. Uh, we do have to protect Kai as well, so I, I believe that I, I should escort him back, and then upon my return, uh, the other plan should be ready to be in place. Excellent. 
we'll work things up from our end until then. Fair winds and following seas. And Kite gets up and goes over and uh, sits next to the princess where everyone would assume that he would be. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Arabella looks at you and goes, Any longer, I thought you were flirting with my bodyguard. She's not my type. Too assertive. Oh, really? You don't like women who are assertive? Oh, okay, good to know. I don't like women who are assertive that carry a sword. Tara Flinches. Can't fault that logic! <laughs> uh, Ponzi! Yes. What are you doing for breakfast? Crying over the lack of jello shots to their left. Yeah, the king kept stealing them all night. You're just like, he, he is perfectly functioning. You have no clue how he is not hung over to holy hell. He even took the extra strength one. I, it's a double. <laughs> now I'm going to have to spend hours putting these back together. So you're sitting there, and, and uh, the king comes over to you, sits down, slaps his hand on your back. He goes, so... Mr. Poffins. Yes. I know this might sound a little weird considering we're trying to, you know, not have the whole thing happen, but eventually we'll have to do the whole welcoming party for whoever wins this tournament. Can I count on you to uh, help cater the uh, alcoholic side of the, of the presentation? I'll get you my budget. He looks and goes, let me make it, let me make it more clear. Can I count on you to make every alcoholic beverage there extremely strong? Um, I can't make them any stronger, I don't think. <laughs> you need to. And he leaves that threat on the air as he gets up and goes and sticks across to the table from the, his daughter and kite. <laughs> Llewellyn laps over at this point, lands next to you. Covered in this royal blue ink that he's just been getting an ink bath in. Do I need to give you an alcohol bath to get that out? Maybe, but uh, more important question. Did the king just threaten you to make stronger booze? Yeah, he doesn't realize he 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 just drank my my pure alcohol shot. That man is inhuman. I'm gonna have to find a way to make it stronger than pure. This is um I, I, I do have one other question, sir. Yes. Is it common when one consumes one of these beverages that they snore loudly? Chloe snored all night, didn't she? I could get absolutely zero rest. Like, didn't matter what I tried. I tried sleeping open. I tried sleeping close. I tried sleeping in the bag. I tried having her flip over. I tried covering her face with my pages. Nothing worked! D did you try leaving the room? The door was shut and I have no hands. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll, I'll make sure to put a better sedative in the next one. Thank you. A better oh. sedative so she sleeps harder and snores louder. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So, King sits down and looks 
at you, Kite, and goes, So, uh, have you considered my proposal? I will do it. Thank you. I figured you would. Preparations were made for the boat last night. There is a small schooner, I guess you could call it, at the dock next door. That will be what you guys will use to get back to our jet team. Okay, we, I will uh, gather everyone, we'll develop our plan, and we'll depart mid-morning. Thank you. He looks and goes, and now to go put on a smiling face and go be entertained by good fights for bad reasons. Your Majesty? Oh, hold on. As the uh, king gets up, uh, Kite does as well, and because Kite wants to go, uh, obviously get all of his armor on and everything, uh, looks at the princess, gives her like a little smile, nods, uh, and says, "Don't enjoy too much," and well, oh, walks out. Make me a perception check as you walk away. You hear under her breath say, there's only one, one fight I've enjoyed. Aww. Uh, Your Majesty, I clearly actually kind of raise his hand to kind of get the king's attention. Yes? Uh, there, there's something I've actually been wondering. Yes, uh, you have my permission to date my son, and he walks out. <laughs> Wow. And Alan goes, be, be red. Uh, Arabella falls out of her chair laughing. The queen, who's been in there watches the whole time, just looks, and she's got the biggest smile on, <laughs> on her face. <laughs> And Chloe just like her fork just kind of drops. And she like is speechless. And with that, we'll end our session. <laughs> so thank you all very much for watching. On behalf of Chameleon Ice, Crimson Avix, Noraster, and OPT Lawyer, I am TG reminding everybody to, of course, as always, keep hailing.